Welcome to the art project. If you find this video to your satisfaction, I hope that you will give it a thumbs up. If you find it to your satisfaction, then chances are good you will find a lot of the videos on my channel to your liking. I have a lot of art videos of different kinds, so please subscribe. So, as I said in a couple of videos back, it's my spring break. And so I've got the entire week off of work so that I can play in my studio. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm going to be doing other things. Uh, got some tr um, plans to go and see the dolphins at the marina. Um, we're going to go golf, uh, go kart riding and play some putt putt golf with my kids and we're gonna have a good time but I get like some free time just so I can make some paintings and what I really want to do this week is experiment with the water soluble oils that I've been using um, I've uh, really kind of enjoyed uh, the water mixable oils I'm using Windsor and Newton. Um, I've got a little sketchbook that uh, is, let's see what it says on the front of it. It says, Artist Touch Fine Art Studio Mixed Media Pad. Versatile, heavyweight paper for all types of artwork. Accepts wet and dry mediums. Acid free, 60 sheets. It's some um, pretty impressive paper. It's uh, pretty thick. And um, so far I've done three, three little oil paintings in it. Uh, the first one was a skull. The second one was a bluebird. And now this one is a skull and a bluebird. Yeah, I know. One track mine. Well, uh, the way this came about, of course, is that... Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I like to draw and paint skulls. And uh, my wife asked me to do a painting of a bluebird. And when I, after I posted that picture of the bluebird and that video of the bluebird, uh, somebody commented with a photograph of a bluebird that they had taken. And it was a gorgeous, gorgeous bluebird uh, with some bright oranges and reds, I guess, on it. Um, also, I've said this before in videos, I'm colorblind, so um, my colors may not be spot on, but anyway, I just kind of did the best that I could, and uh, it was just a fantastic photograph, and so I asked them if I could paint it, and they said sure, and so I, I decided that since I'd already painted one bluebird, and I'd already painted one skull, that it would probably be worth the experiment of combining images together, juxtapositioning two different uh, types of images. And so I did. I, uh, I drew a picture of the skull from, from life, like uh, the skull's sitting right here on my countertop, on my desk, and I uh, painted it. And the photograph of the bird was on my computer and so I just drew the bird and then I drew the skull kind of under the bird and uh, the idea is that the bird is perched on the forehead of the skull and I don't know I think I, I think I did pretty good I would have liked to have made the bird a little bit higher but I have a tendency to draw really large and so um, the the I wanted to get all of the bird and most of the skull in the picture so they ended up being a little bit too large um, to do quite the way I wanted to but anyway I think it works out all right I also kind of would have liked it if the bird was sort of facing a different direction but I just took what I had and did the best with it that I could um, I think there's some other stuff that I could do some touch-ups and so on. Um, you'll notice that this first color that I'm using for the skull is really pretty dark. I mean the skull is a pretty bright cream color. 
but I like to um, kind of work from the mid-tone in two different directions and uh, you know work from the mid-tone to the lighter and to the darker or to the darker and then to the lighter um, and the skull goes through a few changes like uh, you'll you'll notice in a little bit after I get most of the um, base coat roughed in that I will actually um, uh, later on kind of lighten up the entire skull a lot uh, give it even a yellower appearance um, the skull that I'm using that I'm looking at is a plastic skull that I bought from uh, Jerry's Auto Artorama um, it was a uh, just kind of a, a drawing prop prompt that they or prop drawing prop drawing prompt one way or the other it's something to draw and it was in the uh, artist catalog and I bought it so that uh, my students at Gulfport High School could draw and uh, use it to practice with and uh, I probably use it as much as they do I, I just really enjoy uh, the organic quality of the skull and um, the challenge that it poses so uh, I've drawn it a few times, painted it a few times, um, and we, um, oh yeah, so it's a it's actually a pretty creamy color, I think, and and like I said, I'm colorblind, so I don't know for sure, but anyway, this is the the initial color that I came up with, and it looked a lot lighter when I mixed it, I thought, than when it went on to the uh, paper. So, you know, once you put it with next to the white on the paper, it, it looks a whole lot darker. Uh, but I went with it because, like I said, I like to work from the mid-tones to the darker tones. And I also have this philosophy that whatever I do on there, um, I have the ability to fix it. Or I have it has the potential to be fixed. And I may not fix it every time, but, like, if it's too dark... Well, then I can add a whole lot more white and lighten it up. I mean, it is oil paint after all, so it stays pretty wet. And when you add the color, I mean, obviously you can't you can't really take a color off. But if you've got the right set of colors and you need it to be lighter, then you just add add more white. Or if you need it to be darker, you add more of a darker color. Now I chose red um, to do the shadows um, because I had experimented with blue and I knew that the red would kind of darken it and be more colorful than just adding black. If you add black you get, you know, it gets kind of grayish and maybe even muddy. And so I, I didn't want to go with black at first. I wanted to kind of darken it slowly so I chose the red. And then the French ultramarine blue is darker than the red, so I used it to get even darker darks in the shadows. Now, uh, all of this is just continuously building and building up of the paint, um, adding more and more um, of the right color in the right places and then blending it in. And uh, so I started with the skull for knowing no particular reason and and that's okay I think I started with the skull because of the colors that I was going to mix up and I don't really know why that is exactly but it seems like I remember thinking um, that I had, I had done these colors before done the skull before and um, so I just I don't know I just started with the skull so here I'm adding a little bit of blue to make the uh, the depths in the eyes and the nose that much deeper. And while I've got the blue out, I might as well start on this bird. I started with just some straight ultra, uh, French ultramarine blue, but then I realized that that was not right, that the bird was not quite that dark. French ultramarine blue is pretty dark. You can see a little bit of it there on the shoulder of the bird. Uh, the paper has quite a bit of tooth to it, and so uh, it's hard to get the paint 
into the texture of the paper easily uh, but that's okay yeah, eventually you can kind of work it in I think I've uh, mentioned before how I like to get really close up with the camera I like to get really close up to the um, images that I'm painting and, and even when I'm mixing the paint it's just really cool to watch the brush and the paint smear around um, I did a video a couple of months ago I called therapy painting and basically I, I just painted a bunch of I don't even know what you call it it was a fun painting to do and, and it was um, uh, it turned out okay but it was more fun to watch I think on the video and more fun to watch the paint smush together uh, I'll try and leave a link or a card or something so that you can watch that video if you want to. Um, it's kind of a long video because I didn't want to speed anything up. I wanted you to be able to see every swish of paint in real time. Uh, I might have sped it up a little bit in different places, but not much, if if any. And it's kind of a long video. but um, So I think that kind of covers it. Um, I've had a couple of comments on my other videos about, um, about, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, about talking over the video and dialogue or monologue in this case versus, uh, music. Um, just a couple of comments. I don't know how many people would prefer listening to me talk or, um, listening to music in the background. Um, I don't know why anybody on earth would want to listen to me talk, but I appreciate it. Those couple of comments that said that you did, um, that you preferred that over the music. The music is a lot harder to do anyway. So, um, I won't be doing a lot of these videos where I just, you know, talk for 30 minutes, but, uh, while I've got spring break and I'm trying to do several of these, um, practice oil paintings um, and since a couple of you said you enjoyed it I thought I would go ahead and and do some more so um, let me know what you think down in the comments below uh, if you got any questions um, leave them leave them for me uh, be something that I can answer in the next video instead of just talking randomly uh, a few people asked me uh, what uh, kind of paints I was using I'm using uh, water mixable Windsor and Newton water mixable oil uh, paints. Let's see, it actually says Windsor and Newton artisan water mixable oil color. And uh, I've been using cadmium orange, cadmium red, um, titanium white, uh, cadmium yellow, pale hue. And French ultramarine as well as um, ivory black and Payne's gray so those are kind of my favorite colors uh, uh, you can see right here in the um, on the painting I'm adding some white and I'm just really trying to lighten the skull up a lot because there's actually a, a pretty bright light behind the skull shining onto it uh, and I want to try and capture that it's not exactly what I would call chiaroscuro or tenebrism, but uh, it's pr pretty bright on one side and pretty dark on the other. Um, not quite chiaroscuro, but close. And uh, I was trying to capture that, but um, it's a little bit different when you're painting in color than it is when you're painting with, um, or when you're doing it in black and white, pen and ink. Which is what I've been used to for a while now. I like to do a lot of pen and ink, and when I say pen and ink, I mean, I mean, I, I actually have a dip pen and I actually dip it in some ink sometimes. But I also just like artist pens, you know, the um, the Micron Pigma or the um, Faber Castell. No, that's not what it is. What is that other pen I use? Um, anyway, just different artist pens. And I like a size 
uh, 05 or 03, I think, are the kind of the best sizes to use, although a really tiny um, 01 is nice uh, sometimes. Anyway, and then lately I've been using a ballpoint pen. Um, I've got a blue ballpoint pen. It's just a regular big blue ballpoint pen that has really been kind of fun because you, when you're done, you've got this bluish tint image. You know, it's not like solid black or solid white. It's kind of interesting color, and uh, and yet you get the same kind of effect. Plus, you can draw lightly with the ballpoint pen. Like you can barely graze the surface, and it'll be lighter than if you. Um, write regular or press down harder with it so that's um, been kind of interesting to do um, so let's see what else we got I'm not sure what I'm going to paint tomorrow uh, I'm hoping I can get some time tomorrow I'm pretty sure we've got a full day of activities but I'm hoping I can squeeze in a little painting sometime either tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening um, get another practice run in so I've been out of school uh, Friday Saturday and Sunday and Monday today's Monday so I've had the opportunity to do four paintings but I've only done three uh, I didn't do one Sunday because it was Easter Sunday and I tried to spend as much time with my family as I could. We had a good time. We did a lot of Easter egg hunting. Um, and um, we were going to go to church and go out to eat, but we didn't, uh, didn't do either of those because my wife is sick. And so we stayed at home. And uh, around noon, when she got to feeling better, we ate, out, we ate Subway out on our back patio and did a little Easter egg hunting. I went and hid, uh, I don't know how many plastic eggs I hid, 20, 25 maybe. And the girls, my girls took turns uh, hunting for them. Can I just say that the Easter eggs they make these days, the plastic Easter eggs, are not like they used to be. I mean, these these plastic Easter eggs are so flimsy, it's hard to put them together without them collapsing inside of one another. Um, it used to be that plastic Easter eggs were a solid kind of material, solid plastic, and they would flex, but they wouldn't flex that easy. And, and I don't know, you, they were, you didn't have to struggle to get them to kind of cap, to close. You could put candy in them. Um, these things, I, I reach into the basket and grab one and it just collapses under my fingers. And then I have to try and get it to fit back together just right without collapsing it again lousy eggs that they're making these days well anyway sorry um so i had easter eggs um and we watched goonies yeah we watched goonies last night kind of a family movie family time and uh um, my oldest daughter is awesome love her to death but she kind of freaks out when things get creepy and will actually hide her face. It's like, what is the point in watching a movie if you hide your face? Uh, when we watch the Goonies, I don't remember the Goonies like screaming and yelling over each other all the time. That was annoying. Um, the Goonies is a good movie. I remember watching it as a kid and just loving it. I think my daughter liked it a lot. Both of my daughters liked it a lot. But, um, but for me, this time around, like can y'all stop yelling I just I have a very low tolerance for screaming and yelling and talking over one another in loud voices now I don't know what it is um I like my peace and quiet um what is your favorite movie from growing up I'm trying to um watch different shows with uh, my daughter and like watch some kind of family shows you know and i'm trying to find some that you know are not all like all that new but like shows that i watched as a kid that really meant a lot to me and uh she enjoys them she likes them um, it's not like i'm 
really forcing them on her. She doesn't. She just likes watching movies, and she doesn't really know a good one, uh, whether it's good or bad. She'll watch just about anything. She doesn't like the really scary ones. Um, and Goonies was a little bit creepy, and uh, we watched uh, Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, and it got kind of creepy at some point, but um, but she made it, and uh, she liked it. Uh, I think we watched all the Star Wars movies. We watched them in chronological order, pretty much, and she really liked Star Wars. Um, and uh, let's see, what else did we watch? We watched um, Back to the Future, uh, all-time favorite movie. I think decisively the best movie of the 80s is the movie Princess Bride. Now, okay, I say all-time best movie of the 80s is Princess Bride. I, I mean, I think that I could probably watch that. And, and I'm a guy, I like Die Hard and The Born Identity and The Transporter. I like movies like that. But if I had to watch a show with my family... Um, over and over and over again, it would have to be The Princess Bride. Just a great, great movie. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of Die Hard. Big fan of um, Born Identity. Of course, Born Identity is not a uh, 80s movie. But um, whatever time you grew up in, whether it's the 80s, the 90s, the 70s, um, the new millennium, um, whatever it was, whatever time period you grew up in, what is your favorite movie? What is like your go-to movie? The movie that um, you could watch a hundred times in a row if you had to. Um, I'm not promising that I'll watch it, but uh, I'm open to suggestions. Let me know what you have in mind. Notice right here for the shadow that I didn't go with any black or anything. I uh, used some... I put down yellow first, like the table, and then I added red and kind of made it a little bit orange. And then I'm adding uh, some blue, ultramarine blue, to darken up a little bit, a little part of it. And, um, yep. Try and stay away from black, if at all possible. I've heard people say that before, stay away from black, but I just didn't really understand it as much as I do now. Like... You almost really don't need black. Um, some of these other colors, like ultramarine blue and cadmium red, they make a pretty dark mixture anyway. And so, I uh, try and stay away from black. Um, after I thought I was done, I took a picture, and then I went in, and then I realized, wait a minute, I didn't do the shadow for the bird. Plus, um, the there are so many other little highlights and stuff that that I didn't really paint in and shadows that I didn't paint in so I went back and did a lot of work um, here in the last few minutes of this video um, by the way this video is sped up four times its normal speed it took me about two hours uh, to do everything from start to finish so um, in case you're wondering this was a, a good two hours worth of sit down and paint time so uh, I went into the eye here and made it a little bit darker and then I came back and I did that with the red and then I decided it needed to be even darker than that so I came back in with some blue and then I had to do the same over on the other eye to make it match so it didn't look like one eye was just blacked out and the other eye um, was not and then after doing that what did I do after that? I think I went into the shadow under the bird yeah there we go I had to make the shadow up of course because uh, there is no um, bird sitting on the skull and so I just kinda had to do the best I could in deciding what the shadow would look like and then I just kinda faded it out a little bit so um, not really totally sure I did that right but check it out and see what you think um so I'm trying not to do a whole lot of that stuff that all these youtubers do at the beginnings and ends of their videos where they go need to hit the like button thumbs up subscribe tap the little bell leave a comment down below 
share on your favorite social media plan. Uh, I mean, I'm doing it. I just did it, didn't I? But I don't really want to do it all the time. But I know for me, I watch a, a great video and love it and forget to hit the like button. But that like button is so important for us YouTubers. If you don't hit that like button, then YouTube doesn't know to show that video to other people who look for certain search terms like ours. So um, please, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And there it is. Y'all have a great day. Go make some art.